So the government has done it again. They've raised those interest rates up again to 5%. Those mortgage rates are going to be affected by this, and it's going to affect everything that you do, whether it's going to be credit on your lines of credit, your credit cards, your company income, whatever it is, it just got a lot more expensive. We're going to be diving into what did j talk about today. I think it gives us a lot of guidance to where we're going to be in the very near future. So let's share this with you guys. And I want to know what you guys think about what he's going to be saying. Before discussing today's meeting, let me briefly address recent developments in the banking sector. In the past two weeks, serious difficulties at a small number of banks have emerged. History has shown that small, right? isolated banking problems, if left unaddressed, can undermine confidence in healthy banks and threaten the ability of the banking system as a whole to play its vital role in supporting the savings and credit needs of households and businesses. That is why, in response to these events, the Federal Reserve, working with the Treasury Department and the FDIC, took decisive actions to protect the U.S. economy and to strengthen public confidence in our banking system. So I just have to briefly jump in there, you guys. So what Jerome Powell is talking about is that we had all these collapses of the banks. Most knownly is that Silicon Valley Bank, and they were bailed out for $25 billion. Now, the question all comes down to, should they have bailed them out? Remember, we were never supposed to bail out banks again. This was the promise that we had the Frank Dodd Act in 2010. We were never supposed to bail it out. But who is going to pay for it? Remember, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what they want to call it. It always comes back to consumers. And so they did bail out this bank. And should they? So this always comes down to when somebody takes a risk to open a business, they might make the profit or they might fail. Why does a bank be able to behave so poorly? And then all of a sudden, if they make money, they keep it. And if they lose money, it has to be the taxpayers that bail them out. We don't know if that's actually should be that way. I don't think so. These actions demonstrate that all depositors' savings and the banking system are safe. With the support of the Treasury... The Federal Reserve Board created the Bank Term Funding Program to ensure that banks that hold safe and liquid assets can, if needed, borrow reserves against those assets at par. Two big problems there. So first of all, he said all depositors are going to be guarded. Remember that FDIC insurance in the United States is only for accounts less than $250,000. In Canada, less than $100,000. So this whole business about everybody is now protected goes against what the rules were supposed to be. We remember that, right? And so that was the first problem. Second problem, if you notice, he said something will give you credit based on par at par. This is a big, big deal. So imagine that you had a house that was worth a million dollars, which now with these interest rates is only worth 700,000. They may have had a million dollar mortgage on it. I don't know. And they're willing to give them a million dollars cash for that million dollars mortgage, even though the home is not worth that anymore. So this is the problem. They have to give some collateral in order to get cash. Bank has to give collateral to the government for them to get cash, right? But now no longer does it have to be at what fair market value is. It could be the inflated amount. Dodgy, right? Very, very dodgy. Come on. So that's something I think I would look at. This program, along with our longstanding discount window, is effectively meeting the unusual funding needs that some banks have faced and makes clear that ample liquidity in the system is available. Our banking system is sound and resilient with strong capital and liquidity. Or is it? (laughs) We will continue to closely monitor conditions in the banking system and are prepared to use all of our tools as needed to keep it safe and sound. In addition, we are committed to learning the lessons from this episode and to work to prevent episodes from events like this from happening again. Turning to the broader economy and monetary policy, inflation remains too high and the labor market continues to be very tight. Colleagues and I. That's important that you have to understand those two parts because when they say that the inflation is too high and labor is too tight, those are the two things that they keep talking about. These are the two things they always have to look at. Is labor high? And that's a bad thing, having too many people working. And what is inflation? Also a problem for them. And they talk about all the tools that they have, but they don't have a lot, right? They can buy treasuries themselves or they could reduce the money supply or raise the interest rate. And some say those two are very closely linked. All right, so let's continue on. He doesn't have that many tools, is my point. I understand the hard that high inflation is causing, and we remain strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2% goal. Price stability is the responsibility of the Federal Reserve. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone. 
in particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of long of, of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. The U.S. economy slowed significantly last year, with real GDP rising at a below-trend pace of 0.9 percent. Consumer spending appears to have picked up this quarter, although some of that strength may reflect the effects of swings in the weather across the turn of the year. So we don't really need to hear all about the weather, you guys, but this is what's important, is that the rate has gone up. And why is the rate going up in the United States? Because the two things that they're looking at, they're looking at labor, is there high employment? And the number is yes, we're at record highs. Number two, is inflation high? Yes, it's at record highs. Now, you know that Canada and the United States are like closely linked, tied to the hip. I'm in Canada. So 92%, I think it was, 94% of the time, whatever the United States does, Canada does as well, okay? But we're facing some really, really rocky times right now. No one has ever seen this before. Let me share my screen with you because because we're facing a lot of problems across the board. Now, if we go look at the Fed rate hike, the Fed rate hike is now up by a quarter of a percentage point, but they are promising that it may be coming near an end, which is a really good thing. The Federal Reserve said on Wednesday that it's gone up that quarter point. Yeah, yeah, we know that. Now, take a look at this chart. I find it funny because it was this high back before the great financial crisis. And of course, once the great financial crisis started hitting, it the lower rates all the way to the floor. Okay, we know that. Then they started to get brave much too late, by the way. And they started raising rates, raising rates, raising rates all the way until, check that out. It's now June 2019. If you guys remember in the fall of 2019, right here, they had already seen the problems. It was dropping because there was massive contagion in the banking system. When that happened, okay, right in the fall, it fell to the floor. Notice though, that when this problem happened, it's because the repo market almost exploded and the government was putting $10 billion of bonds in cash just to prevent the repo market from going under. This started happening before the pandemic started. Before. So the problems in the banking system have been around for a while. Now, what's happening with the inflation elsewhere? If we look at Canada, Canada now is worried that inflation is going to be stuck above 2%. The UK came out today. They had a 10.4% inflation. This is going to continue. The problem is with Canada and the United States is we are tied at the hip, tied at the hip. And now that we have the exact same information as the states, the states have high employment, high inflation. Canada, high employment, high inflation. Now, for some reason, Canada decided to pause rates, United States decide to keep hiking rates. Remember, if you continue to hike rates, people like your dollar more. So people will be piling into the US dollar, the Brent Johnson dollar milkshake theory. But if you go into the Canada where we pause the rates, so now we're going to keep the prices of your mortgages lower, but we're going to increase inflation on all the goods and food and durable things that we're going to need. Big problemos. <laughs> Either way, this is why it's a tough decision. Do you take from your right pocket or you take from your left pocket? And that's the situation that we're in right now. So the U.S. is going to be continuing down this road. We got some more things that we want to show you as well. Also, we're going to be doing a complete video on the summary of the governing council deliberations. So this is why Canada has decided to pause those interest rates. But even if you look at Canada, overall, we're still seeing not adjusted for inflation. We're seeing our GDP higher than it was in previous years. But the reason is, is because because we're having massive money supply expansion, not just because we're being more productive. So this problem is going to continue in the UK, in England. It's going to happen in Canada and United States and everywhere else. This problem is going to persist. It's going to be around for a while. Now, Jerome Powell, I know that they always have to instill confidence in the banking system. They have to. What else are they going to say? And they also have to say everything is going good and we had to do this for national security. What else are they going to say? But me and you, we have to be able to read the information that's out there and understand that we're in a lot more trouble than they actually let on. And that's why we've been saying for the past year, good idea to be selling your home and putting your money in places that are going to generate income for you because the next two years is going to be kind of rough. This year is going to be especially rough through this year as more and more people as their mortgages roll over on average is 12% per year. But as they have to roll over and those old rates that they had down at two, 3% are not going to be there and they're now going to be stuck with an 8% mortgage. It's going to really, really hurt some people. Anyway, you guys stick with me. I'll help you through this mess over this year. I wish you the very best. Hope you have a great night and we'll talk to you soon.